The company Rocket Lab is planning to launch the There and Back Rideshare mission on April 19th of 2022. Now this mission will be their first attempt at capturing a first stage electron booster mid-air. So how exactly is that going to work? Let's talk about that. The name of this mission is There and Back Again, and the primary purpose is as a ride-sharing mission, which will launch 34 satellites into a sun-synchronous orbit. Now, the name ride-share essentially just means that it's a variety of customers that are paying to put their satellites on this specific mission. Now, the rocket itself is an electron rocket, which comes from the company Rocket Lab. But there's another reason why this specific launch is gaining a lot of interest, and that is because Rocket Lab is going to try and recover the first stage booster mid-air. But how does that work? Well, first, let's talk about recovery in general. The company Rocket Lab back in 2019 claimed that they want to have a reusable vehicle, one that they can recover and launch again. Similar in nature to what SpaceX is doing with their Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. For SpaceX, they re-enter the atmosphere and use their engines to essentially reignite and slow themselves down to safely land on the surface. Whereas Electron has a slightly different approach. They're actually going to use parachutes instead. But the overall flight profile or the procedure is somewhat similar to what the Falcon 9 does. The rocket itself launched from Earth. It goes up until main engine cutoff or MECO. And this is the point in which shortly after stage separation occurs. Essentially, this means that the first stage does all that it needs to do, the first engines cut off, and then stage separation is when it goes from the first stage separated to the second stage. The smaller upper section of the rocket continues on to orbit, and then the first stage then returns back to Earth. Now for the Falcon 9, this is done propulsively, so either it slows itself down and then eventually lands on the surface whereas Electron isn't going to reignite their engines. Instead, while they re-enter the atmosphere, it's going to slow the vehicle down enough in that it can actually be fall under parachutes. So once it reaches a high enough altitude, specifically 13 kilometers above sea level, that is when the drogue parachutes are gonna deploy. This will start to slow down the booster until it reaches an altitude of about six kilometers above sea level. And at this point, the larger parachute is gonna deploy and slow the booster down even further. At this point in time, the first stage will be falling at around 36 kilometers per hour or 22 miles per hour. At this point, as it's continuing to fall underneath the parachute, a helicopter is going to use a long tether with a cable connected at the end to try and grab onto the parachute and then recover the first stage mid air. You heard that right. They're going to use a helicopter to try and catch a rocket that is falling underneath a parachute. So that sounds pretty ambitious, but how exactly are they going to do this and what are some of the main challenges for this recovery process? One of the first challenges is just re-entering the atmosphere. Since they aren't going to reignite their engines, they will be coming in very quickly, reaching speeds up to 8,300 kilometers per hour and because of this, the atmospheric drag will cause the vehicle to get as high as 2,400 degrees Celsius. Therefore, the booster has to survive re-entry and then the parachutes can deploy once they get to their desired altitude. This process may sound very ambitious. However, Rocket Lab has been testing these techniques since 2019. Some of the very first tests focused on merely re-entering the atmosphere and keeping the booster alive as long as possible. And there's actually been three launches over the last two years in which Rocket Lab has been able to re-enter the atmosphere safely and then land into the ocean. In addition, they've done a variety of drop tests where essentially they drop the booster from one helicopter and try and catch it with another. So they've been able to show that each phase individually has worked very well. So this specific launch or this mission there and back again is their first attempt at trying to combine all the aspects, re-entering the atmosphere, deploying the parachutes, and safely capturing it with a helicopter. You might be wondering though, why doesn't Electron just reignite their engines and try and safely land or control their re-entry, much like the Falcon 9? And one of the reasons is because these are two very different vehicles. 
Electron, or Rocket Lab's rocket, is a small satellite provider. If we look at the first stage boosters, Electron's booster is four times smaller than a Falcon 9 booster, meaning that there's not gonna be as much room for having extra fuel. Whereas for the Falcon 9, the small amount of fuel they're able to carry amongst re-entry is enough to safely land on the surface. Now, on the contrary, the Falcon 9 to have parachutes to safely land it back on the surface would be incredibly heavy and could be challenging to control where exactly that lands, where Electron can use those parachutes and a helicopter can try and find it when it's trying to re-enter. Now, the propulsive aspect to it is a little bit more complex, however, it gives you more control into where exactly you're going to land, whereas the parachutes is a little less reliable in terms of where exactly you'll be able to find a landing surface. Therefore, if you're using parachutes, it'll be hard to target a specific barge, and instead you're going to need another vehicle to try and capture it. So if you want to follow along with this launch, it's currently scheduled for April 19th of 2022, which is a Tuesday at 6.35 p.m. Eastern Time. So be sure to follow along to see whether or not they're able to safely recover the vehicle. But now that we've discussed the actually recover process for the Electron Booster, let's get into a little bit more details in terms of the actual payload or what is going to be launching on this mission. As I mentioned before, there are 34 different satellites on board this mission provided by six different companies, including Alba Orbital, Asterix Astronautics, Aurora Propulsion Technologies, eSpace, Spaceflight Incorporated, and Unseen Labs. It's important to note that the Electron rocket is a small satellite launch vehicle, having a height of around 18 meters and being able to take around 200 kilograms of mass to this specific sun-synchronous orbit that this mission is being launched to. So if there are 34 satellites and it can only take 200 kilograms of mass at most, then that means that these satellites are relatively small. In fact, many of them are PICO satellites, meaning that they have a mass of less than one kilogram. Now we can think of most of these satellites as being the size of a toaster, if not much smaller. Therefore, these aren't necessarily large vehicles or large NASA-like missions, but rather tests or scientific experiments that might pave the way for future missions. The purpose of these payloads vary from spacecraft to spacecraft, including one that's going to be measuring the radio frequencies or the emissions from ships that are navigating through the ocean, while others are looking at different Earth observation sensors and being able to communicate between different satellites. So we've talked about the recovery process, the Electron rocket, as well as the payload that's actually gonna be launched on this mission. But there's something a little weird. Can a helicopter actually carry a rocket booster? And it turns out it can. Even though Rocket Lab has tested this process before, it's kind of weird to think about a rocket being carried by a helicopter. Now, the specific helicopter that's gonna be used is a Sikorsky S-92. Now, these types of helicopters are normally used to travel to offshore oil rigs or potentially search and rescue throughout the ocean. So it kind of makes sense that this helicopter is gonna be flying over the Pacific Ocean to try and grasp a first stage booster. But it raises the question of, can it actually carry it? Well, the helicopter, it turns out, is larger than the rocket. It has a length of 20.8 meters long and a width of 5.5 meters. And it turns out that even though the rocket at launch is heavier than the helicopter, once all the fuel is expended, it weighs or has a mass of around 1,000 kilograms, whereas the helicopter at maximum weight or mass can hold almost up to 13,000 kilograms. Therefore, as it's falling under a parachute or as the first stage electron booster is falling under a parachute, the helicopter should easily be able to carry it or grab it out of the sky, as been shown by a variety of Rocket Labs testing. So ultimately, I recommend that you follow along on this live stream, whether it actually happens on April 19th or later, to see how this entire process works. I wish the best of luck to the team at Rocket Lab, and I hope that this recovery process is successful in that they can continue to reuse their first stage boosters and go on further to the Neutron rocket that they are developing. But if you have any questions about Rocket Lab, this specific mission, or the recovery process, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to this channel. 
But with all that being said, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.